great to have you on the stream this evening it's another time with the fantastic tutor and um, today's tutorial happens to be the very first tutorial on the course pool one to one and we're going to be talking about a lot of happenings in the history of african politics not just nigeria but africa large and how it influences or rubs on Nigeria in particular and in particular and um, we will also be diverging a little bit into some other African states as we will be dissecting all right looking into all these intricacies and nitty-gritties of different different theories approaches into or about African politics okay so I welcome all of us once again to the platform and I enjoy us too Please take down important points, all right? Make notes and let's respond with the notes to the classes. Let's submit the notes to the, notes to the class and um, attempt our assignment. And I believe this is the time where my students are attempting their TMAs. I can tell by a number of attendants that we have now. Nonetheless, classes have to proceed. So with this being said, let's um, hop straight into it, all right? So we have... Um, one, two, one. All right. Hang on, my silent so we don't get distracted. <clears throat> All right. Now let's uh, talk about the background to African politics. So this is all we are going to start with. Background. All right. Background to what? African politics. Okay. Now, the background to African politics. Just before we go into the other things. Just before we go into the other things, we need to have, let me quickly prepare our mind, right? Prepare our mind on something. Independence, as, it's, as it seems, all right, is to be, is to be dependent. Oh, let me use the word independence. All right, is to mean freedom, right? Now, freedom, independence. In line with this. Now, if an independent state is one free from external influence, right? Makes its own decision. Now, we're heading somewhere. We're talking about the background to African politics. Now, we all know African to the West, all right? When I say West, I mean Europe. I mean, okay, there's a British. Okay, now we all know that in the history of Africa, the Europe, the British, the France, Europe, British, France, Portuguese. Let's just refer. Let's just refer to all of them as the West. Okay, they actually have or they are still playing they have all right and they are still playing a significant role in our what politics now i'm heading somewhere well, i want to quickly wedge appetite so you can have a proper grasp all right you can have a proper understanding on this topic sentence which is the african politics all right now 
a long time ago, they colonized us, all right? And with time, witness, we've witnessed revolution, all right? We've witnessed, all right, the process of the struggle for independence, okay? And it's evolved, all right? And eventually pulled through and African countries were decolonized, all right? Were set free from their colonial masters, all right? Now, but the word freedom, would you say it is or it has had its purpose in Africa? Would you say in this time and dispensation that a lot of decisions, a lot of actions, a lot of policies, a lot of a lot of programs are not Western, are not what Western influence. Hmm? So now our habits as Africans, majority of our habits, all right, policies, policies. All right, structures. Let's even say our laws. All right, Miss um, Augustina Bassi is going to have you on the stream. I think I'm seeing that name for the first time. Miss Augustina, have you been following us before now? I think I'm seeing that name very, very first time. Let me know, are you new on the stream or are you one of those in the private class? Now, back to what I was saying. Okay, now, the West, now, we know we're talking about the freedom, all right? Can we say that indeed African states have been liberated completely? Or some way, somehow, all right, we are still experiencing a kind of subtool okay a kind of subtle colonization in the sense that our decisions our decisions are being influenced by the west our policies our structures and even some of our laws even our constitution now that's a question for you to answer. And I believe the answer to that question is obvious. You know, just like what we are experiencing. It's all over the news. Coop happening in some parts of African continent. All right? Coops happening there. They are taking over. Why are they taking over? Why are the military taking over? Because they feel that the government is not taking charge enough. They feel... Miss Augustina Bassi said, I always miss online class but i do download them and i just registered for your private class okay miss augustina mr Aug miss uh that's augusta augusta bass it's great to have you on the stream you can do well to ask any question anything i'm saying if you don't get do well to ask me your questions and everything and then um, it's an interactive class so you do well to and um you know one thing with youtube is that um you know one thing i like so much about youtube is you get to type okay you know, there are a lot of things you can't or like telegram class where you have you do the talking but in the exam or you don't do the talking in the exam or you do the typing all right so it it does not just only help you you know it does not it does not only help in the virtual part of it you know but it also helps in your typing ability Okay, you have to type your questions, you have to type your contributions, anything you want to do, you have to type it out, and I like that a lot, all right? A lot of us are so much used with social media abbreviations that we can even barely write some words correctly. But with this, you know, you are, you are expected to contribute, to make your contribution, ask your questions in this class, and you have to type, all right? You have to type whatever it is you are doing. So now let's just continue. So all these things that I said here, it's just a quick detour 
all right, to take us through African independence, all right, how independent are we in Africa, all right, how independent are we, all right, so now, this independent of a thing, all right, our lifestyle, our rule, our tradition and everything, uh, and how it relates to our politics, now when you talk about politics, it has its roots in the tradition of the state, all right, who are, what is politics exactly? Politics is the activities of individuals in the state to ensure a smooth government, all right? All the activities to ensure smooth government is what we refer to politics. It's just quite unfortunate now that it's no longer for general purpose now. It's now more of personal ambitions, all right? Enough of all this, and let's go straight now into the, the material, okay? Now... Okay, so um, African politics, without taking into account the encounter of these states with foreign influence under colonial rules, all right? African politics is so much influenced, influenced by foreign rules. Foreign rules, all right. African politics is so much influenced by foreign rules. That is one point that I'm sure we have established. Now, about almost six decades, all right. About almost six decades. About almost. six decades you know decades like 20 years a decade is about 20 years all right so in about almost 60 years now because it says six decades all right that um the threshold popularly known as african year of independence about almost six decades you know and a decade is 20 years so six now makes it 20 times six all right uh, 20 times 6 should be more than 60 years. That's 20 times 6. All right? 20, 20 by 2, that's 40. All right? 20 by 3 is 60. That's about 120 years. All right? So in about 120 years now, since Africans, as you know, eventually... Okay, yeah, a decade of my, yeah, a century is, yes, century, century is 20, yes, yes, you are right, man, so a decade, a decade should be 10 years, yes, you are right, okay, so now it's about, um, yes, that's 60, thank you for that quick one, Miss Francisca, all right, so now, the threshold African independence, you know, that threshold of if we get our independence, we are liberated entirely, which we all know that that is not the reality. All right. Even after the threshold, 60 years now, after the threshold, that African countries, our decision structure and everything is still so much influenced. All right, it's still so much influenced by foreign rules, directly or indirectly. Now, with that being said, now it would almost okay, it would almost amount to what I call self delusion to claim that African states today are free. All right, we are talking about the African politics, the origin, the background, okay. So it should be self-delusion. To say that African states, now we need to understand, I believe by now we even understand that foreign rules 
of colonial administration or master's policies does more harm than good to any state it is proceeding after. It does more harm than good in the sense that they are very particular about what they have to gain first. So it cannot, you know, it's a different thing, it's a different thing with I I own I own hundred percent. Alright? And you are coming, you are coming to beg me for 20%. Alright? You are coming to beg me for 20% of what I own. So now it's a different thing if I now decide, okay, out of my 100, I can give you 5. Not even 20 that you want. Alright? It's a different thing to say I will give you 5. But in case of foreign rules and colonial masters, from your 100 that belongs to you, you want 70, not by persuasion, all right, but by every means possible. That's why I said it does more harm than good. And it is termed, it is termed what? Co corrosive, all right? It is termed corrosive. Now, Foreign rule, rule slash um, Western influence is what is termed is termed corrosive. Okay, is termed corrosive. Meaning destructive. All right, it is termed corrosive, meaning destructive. Now, so it would be self delusion, okay, to claim that African states today are free from this corrosive effects. All right corrosive imprints, corrosive legacies, corrosive lifestyle that the European, all right, has left on the soil of Africa. And even up to now, it is still haunting us. All right? So, that's why it is said here that even six decades, all right, this is 10. Six decades, 10, 10 years per decade. Six decades, even after that threshold of independence, that we are still suffering from the imprint of corrosive all right, effects on the soil of Africa by the Europeans. Now, the reality today is that African post-colonial setting is confusing. You know, we have post and we have pre. Okay? When we say post, what do we mean? Okay? Can anybody help us with that? When we say post, what do we mean? When we say post independent, post independence and we have pre independence does anybody want to help us with that what do we mean uh miss bassi are you still there miss francisca and um miss simi and um okay let me say okay Okay, yes, Miss Francisca said after. Awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, what about the other person? When we say post, what does it mean? And when we say pre. Okay. 
when we say pre what does it mean okay thank you for your contribution miss francisca okay so i need some other persons to contribute okay awesome yes thank you very much for that somebody says pre means before all right awesome okay i need also other persons to contribute when we say post what does it mean when it's when we say pre what does it signify awesome yes some other person says um after yes okay okay so we have that as that now let's proceed so um thank you very much you guys have all spoken well yeah awesome awesome so now so as we're saying now the reality today is that africa all right post-colonial political post colonial political all right african post-colonial political setting is a confusing mixture are we together it's a confusing mixture of authoritarian and democratic hmm. parliamentary or like lazam liberal institution now post af now post african post-colonial political settings okay we have we have this we have um we have it as confusing confusing in the sense that it's a mixture a confusing mixture okay confusing mixture now let's not forget that before you know post it after let's not forget that before this in the invention all right before the invent the um inception before the colonial masters arrived there was a political system that's the story for another day all right now they came they changed things they forcefully changed things right that's why we said it's corrosive okay now after they've changed everything and left now there was a there was a, a what a conf now after they have left brought their own and left now or they were pursued anyhow you want to put it or they were insisted to leave now there was they left something there was an imprint the imprint they left is confusing now it's a confusing mixture now confusing mixture of what now the political system is now a confusing mixture of authoritarian <clears throat> okay authoritarian democratic we have authoritarian we have democratic we have parliamentary uh parliamentary also we have a um, liberal okay okay i think that's um liberal now you know sometimes even in africa you see we experience this sometimes you know it's it's confusing all right now all this should be embedded in democracy parliament library um, liberal should be embedded in democracy 
all right? But sometimes we see authoritative, authoritarian system, even in democracy. And he says that decisions are taken without following the due procedure. All right? Executive is giving, executive, uh, judiciary arm of government, judiciary, the, the judiciary arm of government is giving executive an instruction. An executive is flaunting it as if nothing can happen. Like the, the, the Supreme Court of Law, like the highest court of law, the Supreme Court of Law, giving an instruction, passing a mandate, and some other person is just flaunting it, the executive. It's not supposed to be so. In democracy, there's something we call rule of law, which must be respected. That nobody is above the law. Everybody is subjected to the law. But it's, you know, it's quite unfortunate that sometimes it's confusing as some persons in some political offices flounce the law and go scot free with it. It's not just in Nigeria, all right? It is in African politics, all right? Like, um, what states, what African country is it? Well, is it Gabon or something? That a family has been ruling for more than 20 to 40 years. Okay? How do we refer to that? How do we how do we talk about that? How do we what do we talk what do we see about that? Alright? So we have the that is the imprint that the, the corrosive effect, that is the corrosive effect as the Europeans has left on African politics. Now, let's continue. Now, there has been a lot of attempts, all right, but little attempt to resolve this problem. Now, the failure to resolve this conflict, which has its root in the colonial era, was the major dilemma faced by African leaders in immediate post what independent era. Now, this problem has been. This problem has been since the colonial era. All right? This problem has been this conflict <clears throat> has been since the colonial era. All right? And as, as a matter of this problem, it has now turned into a dilemma. A, con a state of confusion, all right? A serious dilemma faced by African leaders, all right? Even after this era, this colonial era, it's now a problem, a, a um, bone of contention for leaders, all right? But as 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 um, as challenging as it might be. Was as challenging as this my post itself. All right, if there is still a solution to this. Now, rather than find solution to this problem, all right, political offices were so much preoccupied with struggle for power. All right, rather than looking for solutions to this problem, people who are in political offices or people who are gunning for political offices are so much in they are so much interested all right they are so much interested in what appropriating themselves the privilege appropriating what appropriating what privileges all right appropriating privileges rather than solving this problem rather than solving this conflict people in political offices are deliberate about appropriating privileges of offices
vacated by colonialists. All right? By colonialists. Colo now, there's a problem on ground. And rather than all hands being on deck on how to solve this problem, African leaders, all right, majority of them were particular about the office, not the responsibility. So there was little or no time, there was little or there has been little or no time to resolve this conflict, the conflict of African politics, the conflict of the corrosive effect left on the robbed on the face of African politics by the colonial masters. All right, and if if this does not, that's why you see politicians kidnapping, killing, using hoodlums, whatsoever it is, just for them to get to the office. I mean. If you can kill, fight, die, blood, just to get to the office. I mean, what is questioned? Your service can be questioned. Because you are supposed to come there to serve. So why do you have to kill? Why do you have to do all sorts of unimaginable things? All right? All sort of imaginable things, unimaginable things, just to get to the office. Appropriating what? Privileges. There's there's no longer time. You go to the office, you serve those that help you get there. Not people that, that you're supposed to attend to, not people that you're supposed to serve and attend to their problem. So we have that as that. So there was little time left for constructing political agenda for appropriate developing the society, properly developing society. Now, consequently, the consequence of this negligence by African leaders, I call it negligence, or the consequence of being of this selfishness by African leaders, has now led to we have now consequently this negligence now has now made Africa decades after decades all right decades after decades year in year out African states all right to rest African state has become a difficult situation, a difficult situation, all right? talking of wrestling what talking of pulling talking of ensuring all right talking of pulling ensuring it was a national consciousness Wrestling, pulling, creating, and enabling. Enabling what? National. Enabling what? National consciousness. 
it is now very difficult. Do you know the meaning of this thing? National. Not just by definition. All right? Nation. A nation. You know, if it's just a state, state is just a definite territory, you know, a group, common interest. But a nation, we have series of states in a nation. All right? So the policies, all right, in decisions, has a long way to go in bringing together these states, not dividing these states. All right? A lot of cultures, multi cultures, varieties of cultures, ideology, and everything. A nation enables, a nation brings all this, consider all this, and have a great what an enabling enabling atmosphere to accommodate all this so it has become very difficult to achieve this national consciousness all right it is being difficult and why it's because you know the 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 um, national identity uh, let me also write and national <clears throat> identity. Why? Because the centrifugal forces are strong. When we say centrifugal, what are we talking about? Enabling this national consciousness and national identity is because is a um, a very difficult thing to do because of what the centrifugal century frugal okay centrifugal centrifugal is what forces are I now you say centrifugal it means a way from the center and when we say away from the center that's division lack of unity all right lack of unity lack of togetherness it becomes a problem so it has a result of the fact that not just the europeans or the colonial masters has done their own but on the part of african leaders all right if they are less office sensitive and more national sensitive then this problem in this conflict will have been eradicated before in a long time ago or it has been reduced to its barest minimum <clears throat> so we have that as that so for we'll call it a wrap for today let's um talk about political parties and how some political parties made um, and how some political parties made some incredible movements that liberated some African countries all right I'm not satisfied with my marker let me switch it Now, we are done with that. Now, let's talk about, very quickly, party, all right, party politics. Party politics, okay, in post-independent era. Now, we are going to talk about some amazing things, some incredible things that came into existence. Please, um, 
permit me to quickly have some water so it's kind of uh, dehydrated right now ah, ah that feels um refreshing so um we're gonna be talking about very quickly some um amazing things that would not have been or that would not have even come into existence if some political party had not come together and not with one voice moved group of people coming together with common goal and um, common goal and vision all right with just a voice everybody's having just a voice you know to achieve to pull through what they believe in now we are going to start from Nigeria. In Nigeria, okay, if you're on the stream and you are here to make yourself known, you can do well to um, say something, maybe hello or something. And um, just like what Miss Francisca did the other time, if um, saying something you don't really understand or something you do not agree with right you just um do well to use the comment section it's an interactive class um, and i'm very very particular about what you say what you think and um, your contributions all right now in nigeria in the post independent era Let's not forget, we said post is after independence. All right? Anything post is after. So we have the NCNC. Now, NCNC, you know, you need to please pay attention to all these abbreviations. All right? NCNC, what does it stand for? It stands for the National Council of Nigerian and Cameroon National Council of Nigeria and Cameroon and this was led by Albert all right it was led by Albert Macaulay 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 all right led by Albert Macaulay. Okay, it's actually an A. All right, Albert Macaulay. All right, Albert led by Albert Macaulay, and um, later he named the Azikwe, <clears throat> and later. Azikwe, all right. In um, the Azikwe, ah, I beg your pardon. In um, the Azikwe, okay, is sometimes referred to as Zik. All right. In um, the Azikwe, now this um, NTNC, all right, gave national struggle a boost. All right. give national list struggle a boost and we also have in um, in Ghana known then as Gold Coast Gold Coast now Ghana then it was not Ghana it was referred to as the Gold Gold Coast then but now Refer to as Ghana, okay. <clears throat> Struggle for independence <clears throat> was um, initiated by independence struggle 
All right. Struggle for independence was initiated by GUCC. All right. And this GUCC is um, set to be um, UGCC. UGCC is the United Gold Coast Convention. United Gold Coast Convention. Now they gave what they initiated the independent struggle in the then Gold Coast, now referred to as Ghana. Now we have until Kwame Nkrumah broke away from broke away and formed this PP the CPP, all right. This only initiated, all right. But thank God for the move of Kwame Kwame who Unkrumah. All right, Unkrumah. Thank God for the move of Kwame Unkrumah, who broke away from this um, United Gold Coast Convention. And he went to form the Convention People's Party. <clears throat> Convention People's Party. That's Unkrumah from after I broke away from the United um, United what Gold Coast Convention. Then he formed the conventions people's party okay now after he has formed this people's party through this political party formed by unkruma kwame unkruma right this helped ghana proclaimed positive action and won independence for ghana in 1957 in 1957 okay so we have um that as that now um you know we've spoken about nigeria spoken about ghana now let's talk about syria leon all right then we'll talk about gambia and some other african states <clears throat> Now, in Sierra Leone, the party that pulled weight in Sierra Leone during the post-independence era happens to be SLNC, all right? This is in Sierra Leone, which is um, the Sierra Leone National Council. That's on um, the... <clears throat> say ah my goodness why why do i keep writing s a that's um say syria all right the syria leon national the syria the syria leon national council all right now in gambia we have the people's progressive party in gambia we have the people progressive party that's a ppp all right so um in zimbabwe we have the zanu and the zapu Zanu and Zapu. All right. In South Africa, we have the ANC. South Africa, we have 
and C. All right? And um, the Af in South Africa, the ANC struggle not for independence, but majority ruled from the apathy regime. As one terrible time in South Africa, the apathy. Okay. Now, during the struggle for independence in South Africa, two factors accelerated pace parties. All right. Now, these factors are, in South Africa, the factor that accelerated the peace parties are devolution of power. Devolution of power. All right. Devolution of power and modification of electoral system. of elect electoral system all right these are the points we need to just take note of now political parties were prime force political parties they were prime when we say prime they are the, they played a very crucial role they played a very crucial part all right, in the struggle for independence, <clears throat> political party, what crucial role in what in independence <clears throat> story in Africa. All right, they played a very crucial part in independent story in Africa. <clears throat> However, it's quite unfortunate, as much as they played a crucial part, all right. However, it's quite unfortunate that immediately independence was granted. All right, this same political party became the source of what? Instability and on democratic policies it's quite unfortunate so we have um, that as that so um, let's quickly take this few points so we'll have we're gonna start from unit 2 in our next class all right so let me raise this <clears throat> Now, I want to quickly talk to you about um, Morgenthal. All right? Morgenthal. Mor now, Morgenthal here in 1964. Now, he made a distinction. All right? about two different things two different parties <clears throat> a distinction okay he made a what distinction about two parties now according to him the patron and the mass parties the patron and the mass parties now the patron parties according to him says they are weak he says the matron parties are they were weak all right they are what undisciplined all right they had little direct membership participation all right undisciplined although they are they are weakly you know organized but nonetheless he referred to them as undisciplined all right undisciplined as undisciplined 
all right? Refer to them as weak and undisciplined, all right? And he also referred to the fact that the um, patron parties only get little membership participation. Weekly organized with little membership participation. Okay, now here individuals were of interest to who patron parties only to exist to exercise only exercise their franchise their voting rights here individuals here are only concerned about exercising their franchise their they are right as a citizen to vote for whoever they want to vote for. All right? Nothing more, nothing less. Now, and um, countries like Ghana, Ivory Coast, or Guinea, all right? Um, okay, no, not, I beg your pardon. So, and um, most parties in Africa fit into this category. Most parties in Africa fit into this category. They just want to do their franchising rights and that's all. They don't want to be involved in the politics. Okay? Now, but here in mass, mass parties, now, countries like Ghana, Ivory Coast, or the Guinea, which is also Ivory Coast. Now, Ghana, Ivory Coast, or Guinea, which had mass parties, Citizens were often mobilized or driven by what? Ideologies to perpetuate leaders in office. Ideologies. That's a, um, ideologies. Ideolo. Citizens were often mobilized by ideologies. Now let me write in full. Are mobilized to what? Mm -hmm. To puppet mobilized to perpetuate leaders. In, let me write this thing clearly. In office, perpetuate leaders in office. So it's just more than, yeah, you are more involved. Yeah, you just exercise your franchise rights, and that's all. So, Morgenta gave this true explanation about the patron and the mass parties. Okay. And here, in mass parties, it says Ghana, Ivory Coast, or Guinea falls under this category. And most of other African countries fall under the patron parties. Now, Western model of democracy is that politics arises out of diversity of interest. Politics arises out of diversity all right of interest according to western model of democracy all right western model according to the western model of democracy okay <clears throat> now those who are in power face democratic opposition all right in Africa, the ruling party equates opposition with treason. All right? Is that serious? In Africa, opposition, all right, they equate it to treason. And on this note, we'll call it a wrap for today. And our next class, we'll take it up from politics in pre-colonial Africa. All right? So, um... I want to thank each and every one of us.
for Miss Francisca. Are you? I really don't understand the emoji you used. Miss Francisca it seems like um, majority of um, majority of us. Ah, uh, uh, hey, Miss Francisca. This is one hour twenty something seconds, and she says she's. You don't want to, Miss Francisca. I don't want the class to end. You know I'm just recovering. Hey, Miss Francisca, let me give us assignments. I know we are busy with our TMAs. No? <clears throat> no, let me just um. In um, in your few words, assignments. Miss Francisca. How is your TME going? And with this, uh, this other person, trust our TMEs are going smoothly. And um, so, um, assignments in your own word. Words. What would you say? <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> I have finished mine. Mm. Good, good, good. I like that. I like that. What would you say about politics? Politics in pre colonial Africa. So that's the assignment. We know what to do. I'm expecting to get our notes and also. Our assignments submitted to the group. So on this note, call it a wrap. Thank you very much, everyone. It's great to have you. Stick around. Okay, two of my courses have not been uploaded. Electives, okay? Okay, with time, the courses will be uploaded definitely time to be uploaded i mean tmes are very fresh anyway so with time to be uploaded so um thank you very much everyone thank you miss francisca thank you um not better roses thank you miss simi thank you um mrs um, bassi and everyone who was on the stream tonight who happens to be on the stream tonight i look forward to seeing us in subsequent tutorials bye-bye